Bullfrog Spa. The Clearwater Saloon and Casino has the best Vegas-style games in East Wenatchee. Come enjoy yourself and discover the nightly action. Win big and meet new friends at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think we should hire more people. Doc, I'm late for a meeting. I'm thinking of starting my own practice. Mm, do it. Too much capital. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We should knock that wall down and expand. Do it. There's always another wall beyond the wall. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we. Happy Friday, television family. Weekend's almost here. For some people, it already is the weekend. It's the time of the year. You know, dog day is the summer. People take some time off from work, do some vacationing and things like that. And why not? Enjoy the good weather while you can because we're on our way to, for some hot stuff next week. We've been telling you about this for, I think, all week long. Well, it's right on our doorstep. Another day and a half of not too hot before we really start cooking up. It's also going to be a little breezy today as well. We'll get to the uh, forecast details coming up. Could see a red flag warning over the weekend. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, the recipe uh, is out there. Is the potential for a red flag warning. So we'll keep a close eye on the local uh, terrain. Hopefully it doesn't catch you on fire. News is on the way. Seahawks played a game that didn't count yesterday. They won. Doesn't count, but they won uh, last night. Uh, Mariners didn't play at all, but they'll play a game that does count tonight. Orioles are in town. We'll get to that as well in sports. And it's just, just about fair time. Uh, this is the time of the year where they start cranking out the local fairs in order. It's the Grand County Fair and then the NCW Fair up in Waterville and then Labor Day weekend comes and goes. And then the Chelan County Fair the weekend after Labor Day weekend. But the Grand County Fair gets to go first. And we uh, spent uh, most of Tuesday, we spent all of Tuesday out in the Columbia Basin. So we got to drop by the fairgrounds, uh, the big, huge, uh, campus that is the Grant County Fairgrounds in Moses Lake. Talk to Jim McKiernan. Uh, he's the fairgrounds manager. He runs the Grant County Fair and we're going to preview the fair for you, which gets underway Tuesday of next week. Jim will be my guest in the back half of the program. Got a lot of things to get to today. It's going to be a busy Friday. It's a scenario that happens. We have five pounds with the programming and a four pound bag, but we'll do our best. Let's start with our tour around North Central Washington with the 1HE Heights camera that is panned. I think about as far out or zoomed by, I should say, about as far out as it can get. Uh, that's out there a ways. That's a newer camera. I think that's our third camera. Uh, it's the most important one, so whenever they upgrade cameras with the latest technology and the latest high-definition technology specifically, we always put it there because it's a great news gathering device. Good morning to the Wenatchee Valley. Sunrise this morning, 552. Sunset tonight, 819. That's 14 hours and 27 minutes of daylight. And just so you know, we have lost 20 minutes of daylight since last Friday. It is that time of the year. The Bavarian Village says hello. Don't forget they're still working on that roundabout where uh, the Tumwater Canyon comes in to the west side of uh, Leavenworth. They're working on a roundabout, which is not a bad idea. They need one there. A lot of traffic in that area. It's always very difficult to turn left off uh, the icicle road onto the highway there. So that roundabout will take care of that but it does tie traffic up a little bit. This is definitely the height of the road construction season. There's a lot of projects going on everywhere. That is Leavenworth. Good morning to our friends in Leavenworth. Good morning to Afreda. We were out in Afreda on uh, Tuesday as well. We stopped by and uh, took a look at the historic Grant County Courthouse and a few other odds and ends. Good morning to Afreda. It's a pleasure to see you on this uh, Friday morning. And up north we go to Billy Goat. Looks a little hazy up there. It's not really hazy. It's just there's so much information in the frame. It's, a, it's slightly hazy, but that can be somewhat uh, not quite an accurate portrayal. For one thing, that's just really, really high up in the air. It's over a mile above sea level, number one. And uh, number two, 
uh, because there's so much information. I mean, how many square miles are in that frame right there? It can look to you on the screen that is hazier than perhaps it actually is, but they still have the fire up near Orville, so that might have something to do with that. Did I mention it's going to be hot next week? It's going to be hot next week. With Tuesday the hottest day of uh, the week, it's going to really get going on Saturday night. Uh, a big upper level ridge is going to build over the Pacific Ocean, and it's going to be all over the Pacific Northwest by Sunday morning. So each day leading up to Tuesday, we're going to warm up each day. Our record high on Tuesday, uh, which is the 15th, our record high is 101. That was set back two years ago in 2021. We hit 101 degrees on uh, the 15th day of August two years ago, and we could break that record on uh, Tuesday. We will wait and see. In the meantime, from the National Weather Service, here we go. Not too bad today. A high of 85 yesterday. We'll get to 87 today. It will be breezy. There's a westerly flow. Now the winds, most of the winds are going to be in the upper elevations, but it's going to channel through the lee of the Cascades. So we're going to see some gusty winds off and on today and Saturday. Waterville will be uh, considerably windier than us because it's all about elevation. The higher up in elevation you go, the more wind you're going to be dealing with. 66 for the overnight low tonight, a couple more degrees on Saturday. I wouldn't be surprised, depending on where the relative humidity is going to be on Saturday. I think we could see a red flag warning. It's a possibility. So Certainly on Sunday as we get up into the mid-90s. Triple digits Monday, Tuesday, slightly cooler Wednesday, slightly cooler Thursday, but it is going to be hot and it looks like we will set a new record high temperature certainly on Tuesday. It's a possibility on Monday as well when we get back together again on Monday. I'll let you know what the record is on that date, the 14th, and see if we have a shot at breaking that. A friendly reminder, and I mentioned this a couple of days ago, we have not hit 100 degrees yet this year. It's an oddity. Last year we hit 100 degrees 10 times. And in 2021, we hit 100 degrees 10 times. And the year before that, we got to at least 100 degrees five times, but we have not hit triple digits yet this year. We hit 99 degrees one time uh, in, August, in uh, July, and that's been it. So triple digits, I think they're coming. Six minutes after the hour, we will have the news for you in two minutes. You're watching Wake Up in Natchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out. The outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My co-workers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. We're turning up the heat with the hottest deals of the year. Right now, during the hot summer clearance sale, only at Click It RV. Number one in sales and service. The best RV brands. Over 1,000 to choose from. And the best deals of the year on remaining 2023 model year-end clearance with incredible 30% off. Brand new RVs discounted up to 30%. Save thousands. Plus, no payments until 2024. During the hot summer clearance sale, now only at Click It RV. Five superstore locations. Hurry in today. Hey, hon, would you run this around to the wash rack? Oh, okay. Hey, hon, what happened? They shrunk the truck. The all-new Midsize Canyon is now available at Sangster Motors. The 2023 Grand County Fair is happening August 15th through the 19th at the Grand County Fairgrounds in Moses Lake. Hundreds of animal exhibits, a huge carnival, and more than 25 food vendors. And fantastic music with Michael Ray, August 17th, with special guest the Olsen Brothers Band. August 18th, it's Ned Ledoux with special guest Jeremy McComb. And on August 19th, Grammy nominee Lupito Infante. It's Grant County's annual party. For more information, go to gcfairgrounds.com. Lots of sunshine, 63 degrees, sunshine all day today, windy and warm. Sunny, windy and warm on Saturday, Sunday, sunny, windy and hot by the time we get to Sunday. It's eight minutes after the hour. A man, a man found dead on the Malaga-Alcoa Highway early Thursday may have been struck 
in a hit and run accident. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office says the 70 year old man was found dead on the highway near the intersection of uh, Stimilk Creek Road and the Malaga Alcoa Highway about 15 minutes after midnight on Thursday. The precise cause of his death is not immediately clear and his identity is being withheld until next of kin can be located. Now a witness told investigators the man was struck by a passing vehicle, possibly a blue Honda sedan 2010 or newer model which drove away from the scene and the vehicle may have damage to the front passenger side from that collision. The chief of special operations Ryan Moody says it's unclear right now whether the man was struck while walking or whether he was already laying on the road when he was struck. A corrections deputy for the Chelan County Regional Justice Center died Wednesday in a motorcycle accident near Lake Wenatchee. 23-year-old Jesus Oliveira had worked the jail for the last 13 months. Chelan County spokesperson Jill Fitzsimmons says Oliveira was riding in the 13,000 block of Chiawana Loop Road when his motorcycle went off the pavement. Coroner Wayne Harris said Olivia, Olivera was uh, lifted to uh, airlifted to Confluence Health Hospital. He died in the emergency room. Back in May, Olivera survived an attack by two inmates that left him with stab wounds to his head and neck. He returned to work after a couple of months. In a statement, jail director Chris Sharp called Olivera's death, quote, a tragic loss for such a young life. Douglas County prosecutors this week decided not to formally file charges against the former Eastmont School District's custodian suspected of sex offenses against a child. 49-year-old Michael Van Housen of East Wenatchee was released Wednesday from the Chelan County Jail after a court deadline to file charges came and went. He was arrested Friday on suspicion of sexual assault against at least one student at Sterling Junior High where he worked as a custodian. Deputy Prosecutor Ethan Morris told NCW Life that he expects Van Housen will eventually be charged following further investigations. He said because Van Housen no longer works at the school where the alleged offense occurs, there's less concern that he might have contact with the suspected victims in the meantime. The trial will not go forward this week for that Upper Valley man who was arrested after that 18 hour standoff with police back in March. This story continues. The defense attorney for Abel D. Wilkes became ill on Wednesday just before jury selection was to begin yesterday morning. Wilkes is accused of pointing a rifle at his neighbor, which led to a heavy police response at his Chumpstick Highway home back on March 28th that destroyed the trailer where he was living. Judge Kristen Ferreira agreed to strike the trial, but no new date has yet been set. Now, Wilkes has consistently said that his rights were violated by the police action and refused to waive his right to a speedy trial. He remains held in the Chelan County Jail on a bond of $250,000. The Renatia School District is rolling out a new communication tool for teachers, parents, and students. It's a new app and is called Blooms. It'll put notifications like teacher messages, updates, alert messaging, all in one place for schools, classes, and extracurricular activities. The technology also provides a private news feed with photos and videos, calendars, and volunteer and event signups. The school district is implementing the app this upcoming school year. It's uh, moving on from the app that they used to use, which was called Remind. The district said they will be inviting parents to download the Blooms app and join their school's app in the coming days. And good news for you folks up in Winthrop and Mazama, the North Cascades Highway reopened on Wednesday, that scenic stretch of Highway 20. Uh, of course, it was closed for a while. About 36 miles of the highway was closed between Rainy Pass and New Halem to allow firefighting activities for the sourdough fire. Well, on Wednesday, the road was open to traffic again, although the 1,700-acre fire continues to burn in the North Cascades National Park. Fire managers warn motorists they, they could see heavy smoke while they travel around. Then along that highway, about 420 personnel remain involved at trying to control that wildfire, but at least you can get through. That's the news at 13 minutes. After the hour, we'll have the news for you again tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. We gather the news, decide what is and isn't news. We disseminate it, we write it, we report it. The news at 5, 6, and 10 on television. If that doesn't work for you. Our news will be up and running on our YouTube page, on our home page, and on our Facebook page right about 5 o'clock. That's when we post it. And at the bottom of the screen is how you get a hold of us if you want to get a hold of us. Seahawks win. 
Too bad it wasn't a regular season game. Mariners had the day off and more. Sports, everything you need to know in two minutes. You're watching Wake Up in HE Valley on the NCW Live channel. Badger Mountain Brewery is your cure for boredom. Jam Night Mondays. Trivia Wednesdays. Live Music Fridays. And Sunday Brunch. There's always something brewing at Badger Mountain. So come join the party. Few things strike fear in the human heart, like the possibility of a rattlesnake bite. Dogs can encounter rattlesnakes on their walks or in their yards, and being curious, often get bitten on their face, neck, and legs. Luckily, a vaccination is available to help neutralize venom so dogs experience less pain and swelling. Even if your dog has received a vaccine, you still need to seek immediate help. Dr. Shauna Baez and the staff of Paws and Claws care about your pet's health. Call 888-PAWS to schedule your vaccination today. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dick's, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. I've waited too long, now I'm jumping back in. My pockets stay fat, but your wallet is thin. You Let's go. Everybody sing the sounds like. If you know. We don't really want to wait too long. The fate prolongs. Sing our songs. Every day is another chance to make our stand. Seal the plan. Do you really know who you are? You're a shining star right now. Sixteen minutes after the hour, the Seahawks began their preseason slate with a nice little victory over the Minnesota Vikings. The final was 24 to 13 at Lumen Field. Drew Locke threw for a couple of touchdowns. The defense stiffened in the second half, came up with a couple of sacks down the stretch to preserve the victory. Our very own Eric Granstrom was there last night. He produces the preseason games for the Seahawks radio network, and he found this report. Well, the Seahawks started the preseason last night in Lumen Field against the Minnesota Vikings, and it was the Vikings that came out and looked pretty good. And in fact, that Seahawk defense that they've been working so hard to improve upon did not look so good on Minnesota's first two drives as the Vikings got out to a 10-0 lead. But it was pretty much all Seahawks from there as the defense settled in. They held Minnesota to just 55 yards in the second half and go on for the 24-13 victory. Drew Locke. Uh, passing on the night with 17 to 24 for 191 yards through a couple of touchdowns off to a slow start but uh, again things improved for Drew Locke and the offense. Aesop Winston the Cougar grad had uh, three catches for 29 yards including Seattle's first touchdown of the 2023 season. Also Jake Bobo out of UCLA uh, three receptions 55 yards he had a touchdown in the second half as well. Uh, the running attack really got going in the second half for the Seahawks to be able to kind of uh, ice this victory and it was a guy you probably never heard of. Uh, Bryant Kolbeck. He had six carries for 32 yards. He also caught three balls for 43 yards and was kind of a wrecking ball out there for the Seahawks as they get the victory over Minnesota here at Lumen Field. Again, 24-13 Seattle off until next Saturday when they'll host the Dallas Cowboys again. Just three games in the preseason. They'll finish up on the road at Green Bay and then have to cut down to 53 to get ready for the regular season. Here at Lumen Field, I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Thank you, Eric. Coach Pete Carroll happy that a lot of the younger players got to see some significant playing time, and he said they were pretty good on both sides of the ball. Well, tonight was uh, was nothing but fun. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, it was hard getting started. You could tell that we this was the first time we tackled anybody. That's why we used the preseason games, and man, the, we needed the first quarter to kind of just whatever, shake the cobwebs or whatever. And the defense came back in the, from the second quarter on, they played great, played great all night long. And then those young kids did a, a, a beautiful job of playing the scheme and, and making the plays we needed to make. Uh, I thought all in all, it was, um, it was really 
a really strong win for us because if we can build on all of the things that happened. And the, the cool thing was that the young guys playing in the fourth quarter and playing well enough to win the football game and shut them down and uh, defense and, and hold the football and all of that. Um, I thought Drew did really well tonight, did a really nice job. I, I believe the ball got tipped on the pick. Um, he had the right choice, the right, he was reading the right guy and all that, and the ball just got tipped at the line of scrimmage. Um, other than that, he was in command and had a, had a nice night. Um, we didn't run the ball as well as we wanted to early, but it was the same thing, blocking and tackling, it just took us a while to get going, and again, that's why we, you know, we, we gotta play these games. Drew Lock 17 of 24 for 191 yards, had a couple of touchdowns, did have that interception that Coach Pete Carroll talked about. Now, last year for the first game, Drew Lock had COVID, couldn't play, so he was pretty happy that he got to play last night. First game here as a Seahawk in my career. Never walked out there in a Seahawk uniform and played a snap. Had a blast. Twelves were uh, definitely in effect. Silent cadence in a uh, preseason game is hard to get done from any stadium, so that was awesome. But um, overall, it felt great. And it just to be playing football again. Gosh, you know, it's weird when you go a whole year without taking a snap. And you know, props to G for doing that last year and rallying this team and getting us to the playoffs. And uh, but man, it felt good to finally be back out there. You know, it's the first time in my career without taking a snap in, in a season. Um, it was interesting. Uh, Going back out there, feeling the flow of a game again, being the one in charge. Um, practice, we do a great job of practice trying to simulate a game, but you know nothing's, nothing's compared to when you really step out there, moving the ball, trying to put points up. Um, and it just, I'll take every rep I can get. Um, it was really, really fun tonight. And now it's back to work at the VMAC in Renton as they get ready for their second preseason game. It'll be a week from tomorrow when they take on a Roger Staubach and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, games that do count. Mariners will try to extend a seven-game winning streak against one of the best teams in baseball. Tonight, the Orioles leading the AL East are in town. Three games at T-Mobile Park. The O's lead their division by three games over Tampa Bay. They're 71 and 44. Seattle trails the Rangers in our division by five and a half games. They're 62 and 52. Louis Castile will start against Baltimore's Kyle Gibson. 7-10 first pitch on Root Sports Northwest. Scoreboard, Orioles come in after salvaging the final game of their series with Houston. They won 5-4. Former Oregon State Beaver Adley Roachman was 2-4 for four with a run, a couple of RBIs, and a home run for Baltimore. By the way, Seattle's recent success has landed the Mariners a game and a half behind Toronto for the final American League wildcard spot. Keep it going. Of course, the Apple Sox season is over, but the West Coast League playoffs continued. Last night, Corvallis scored the go-ahead run in the bottom of the eighth on a sacrifice fielder's choice on a batted ball by Ty Yukimoto to beat Cowlitz 3-2. Frank Camarillo pitched four innings of one-hit shutout in relief for the win. So, they are ready to go. It's one game for the division championship. They will be tomorrow night. Victoria will host Bellingham for the North title. Corvallis will take on Portland for the South title. And the championship of the West Coast League, one game Monday at 635 at the site of the highest remaining seed. And they got rained out last Saturday, but not going to be a problem tomorrow at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. Full slate of racing. It's the Columbia River Throwdown. Five classes of racing featured. The race will include the Jerry's Auto Supply Pro Late Models, the Dick Sitting and Air Conditioning Thunder Cars, the Angel Bill Bonds Bandoleros, the Northwest Pro 4 Trucks, and the Tri-State Mini Stock Tour. Gates open at 4.30, racing at 6, WVSO.com for tickets, and those are just some of the games that people are playing. At 22 minutes after the hour for the obscure holiday, any number of obscure holidays I could have chosen. Uh, in Chad, that landlocked country in the middle of Africa, it's your Independence Day, Chad. When you got your independence from the French. Uh, hasn't been all that good for Chad, though. Lots of uh, dictatorships and military juantas and uh, elected officials uh, getting shot. It's time, times are tough in Chad. I looked this up yesterday. Chad, the country of Chad, is the world's leading export of political violence and anger. Well, you got to have something, I suppose. Today is National Son and Daughter Day. Today is National Play in the Sand Day. But today, we celebrate mountains, and we got a lot of those. When I had to pick a photo for Mountain Day, I said it's got to be Mount Fuji, which has got to be the most beautiful mountain on the planet. It's like just perfect, Mount Fuji. Of course, we all know Mount Everest is the highest mountain on the planet above sea level, 29,028 feet high. It fluctuates between that and about 31 feet because of the snow. It depends on how much snow is there. The rock 
is 29,000 and 28 feet above sea level. Five different types of mountains, uh, folded mountains, and those are the ones that are in the Him Himalayas. That's when the, the, the Earth's crust collide and something's got to give and the mountains come up. There are volcanic mountains, fault back mountains, dome mountains, and plateau mountains. The highest mountain in the solar system, however, is on Mars. It is Olympus Mons. It's 72,000 feet high. It's three times the height of Mount Everest. That's pretty damn impressive. About 80% of all the fresh water in the world begins its journey in the mountains and all of the rivers and streams in the world start from mountains. Mountain sources are responsible for all the rivers in the world. How many people try to climb Mount Everest every year? About 1,200. How many make it to the summit? About half that. Altitude sickness probably plays a role in that. And 30, the top 30 highest mountains in the world are all in the Himalayas, in Nepal, Pakistan, India, and China. We love ourselves, our mountains. It's National Mountain Day today. Why? Because the internet told me. And if it's on the internet, you know it's true 25 minutes after the hour today in history. It started innocently enough. A kid borrowed his mom's Buick on the hot evening of Wednesday, August 11th, 1965, in Watts, in L.A., Market Fry, an African-American man driving his mom's Buick, pulled over by a California Highway Patrol motorcyclist, and we'll show you some footage as we go here. Uh, he got pulled over for alleged reckless driving. He failed a field sobriety test, so Fry was placed under arrest. Uh, the cop radioed in his vehicle to be impounded. Marquette's brother was riding in the car. He went back to his house where he lived, and he brought Mom back. Mom was mad. She yelled at him for drinking and driving. Then the situation escalated. Somebody shoved Mom, and then the guy who was arrested got struck, and then his brother jumped a police officer, and then his mom got into it. The police officer had to pull out a shotgun, and then rumors spread that there was something going on, that somebody had kicked a pregnant woman, that a cop did. More crowds showed up. The police realized they were in trouble. People began throwing objects at the police. They got the heck out of there. The crowd continued to grow in Central Watts. Police tried a couple of times to break up the fights. They were attacked. They got out of there. They retreated. And for the next six days, 46 square miles of Los Angeles, the entire section of Watts was a combat zone. When the Watts riots finally ended, 34 people died, 1,000 people were injured, 3,438 people were arrested, 977 buildings were either looted or destroyed, and there are still sections of Watts in L.A. that were never rebuilt. The Watts riots, which lasted almost a week, broke out on this date in 1965. On this date in 1969, they were back three weeks after returning from the moon, the three astronauts that went to the moon, well, two of them ended up in the moon, the other one, of course, didn't. They were put into quarantine as soon as they got back to the planet because they didn't really know. We've never been to the, to the moon before, so there are, are there pathogens and parasites and diseases that we can't cure that the two astronauts who went on the moon, could they have brought them back to us and then we would have a problem? So they put them into quarantine for three weeks, even the guy who never even ended up on the moon because they figured they were you know, making contact with each other. Turns out they didn't really need to do that. The next time we went to the moon, they had a quarantine for like a day and then they quit doing that. Well, you know, there's no atmosphere, there's no life, so it made sense. But the Apollo 11 astronauts were finally released after a three week quarantine and they said, good, we're going home. Happened on this date in 1969. Uh, this incident passed with almost no national interest at all. There were no parades. There were no hugging and kissing in Times Square. There was none of that. On this date, 1972, 51 years ago today, the last United States ground forces left Vietnam. Nobody even paid any attention to it. They just, we just kind of petered out and eventually we left. That was uh, 51 years ago today. 39 years ago today, it was a Saturday, Ronald Reagan was getting ready to record his weekly radio address. He was on vacation at his ranch in California. Uh, he was just doing the sound check. That was all, and uh, of course, it was beaming up to satellites so the stations could record it. And somebody rolled tape before they were supposed to roll tape and accidentally caught 
Ronald Reagan telling this joke. My fellow Americans, I'm pleased to tell you today that I've signed legislation that will outlaw Russia forever. We begin bombing in five minutes. I uh, didn't go over too well with uh, a few folks, especially in Eastern Europe. The Russians weren't laughing anyway. Didn't affect, Ronald Reagan was running for election, didn't affect, affect anything, but it was a bit of a tift at the time. I remember that. This is the 32nd anniversary of one of the most amazing golf feats ever. John Daly, 25 years old, nobody had ever heard of him before, barely had a PGA card, wins one of the most remarkable golfing events ever, the 73rd Annual PGA Championship at the Crooked Stick Golf Club in Indiana, Carmel, Indiana, just outside of Indianapolis. He was the very last alternate. He wasn't even in the field of 148. He was the last alternate, and then the day before the tournament started, Nick Price, his wife, went into labor, premature labor. So who's next on the list? John Daly? John? John Daly was in Memphis. This was Wednesday night. He hopped in his car and drove all night from Memphis to Indianapolis, uh, had never played the course before, did not get a warm-up round. He hired Nick Price's caddy, because he had nothing to do, and then John Daly went out and won the PGA Championship. Absolutely a remarkable story. And by the way, the first day of the tournament, a spectator, Thomas Weaver, was struck by lightning during a weather delay and was killed. After John Daly won the tournament, he donated $30,000 of his earnings to Weaver's family so they could start a college fund. And both of Weaver's daughters went to college on that fund fund and uh, one of them is now a doctor, which is a pretty cool thing. One of those little things that people don't really remember about John Daly who <laughs> came out of nowhere to become uh, a major American celebrity 31 years ago, 32 years ago today. And this has never happened before and has not happened since. This is eight years ago today since Major League Baseball expanded to 30 teams in 1998 for the first and only time in Major League Baseball history on August 11th, 2015, all, of course, all 30 teams played, all 15 home teams won. The home teams went 15 and 0. It has never happened before, and it has never happened since. One heavenly birthday, a guy you've probably never heard of, David Rice Ashison. You don't know who the heck is that guy. He may have been the President of the United States for a day. Inauguration, inauguration Day back in uh, 1849 fell on a Sunday. Zachary Taylor was the president-elect. He said, I will not take the oath of office on a Sunday. The outgoing president was James Polk. By Constitution, his term ended on Sunday at 12 noon, but this, the guy who was supposed to take the oath of office, Zachary Taylor, said, I'm not going to do it. Uh, on March 2nd, a couple of days before the outgoing vice president, relinquished his job as the president of the Senate, so there wasn't a vice president. Next in line, according to the Secession Act, was the president pro tem of the Senate, happened to be that guy, David Rice Atchison. So, Polk's term ends on 12 noon on the 4th, but Taylor won't take the office until 12 noon on the 5th, and since that guy was next in line because there was no vice president either, it's been claimed by some people anyway that from 12 noon on March 4th, 1849 to 12 noon on March 5th, 1849, that Davis Rice, David Rice Acheson was actually the President of the United States for a day. It actually says that on his tombstone. That's his claim to fame. Nowadays, most constitutional scholars say probably wasn't. And now it doesn't matter because of the most recent amendment that was passed in the 1960s uh, the president becomes the president when his term begins, oath of office or not. It's more of a formality than anything else. You don't need the oath to be the president now. 33 minutes after the hour. Mike McDonald has got an opinion. Did I put an opinion in for Mike? I did. Thank you. And then our good buddy, Jim, Jim McKiernan, who uh, manages the Grand County Fairgrounds. And he also takes care of the Grand County Fair. And by golly, it starts next Tuesday. Off to Moses Lake with Jim. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. 
We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Sigmar. Full service at a low, low price. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Mobiletel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509 509- 888-8888 today. Whether you're just dipping your feet or plunging right in, boating with a Sylvan pontoon boat is the way to go at Bob File Boats and Motors. Sylvan pontoon boats offer performance, reliability, and stability to take you, your family, and friends to the water in style. Sylvan pontoon boats have a wide variety of styles and layouts to suit your needs. See the full line of Sylvan pontoon boats at Bob File Boats and Motors on Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee or online at bobfile.com. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. Dog Magnati and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I do some adoption work. I think you know that. And now and then, mostly what I do is what we call family adoption, in which a step parent, usually a guy, frankly, is stepping up to adopt his wife's children. Well, when this type of adoption occurs, the adoption petitioner, like I said, usually the dad, is accepting all legal and social and economic responsibility to those children who, although they aren't his biological kids, have the same rights and relationship the new dad has to any biological children that might be in the relationship. <clears throat> To make this point, I always tell the prospective adopted parent, yes, you know, you now have the authority to sign the child's field trip permission slips, but they also become your heir and they're going to inherit your stuff. <laughs> now, happily, most of these prospective parents just are very happy and eager to accept all this responsibility. And then I tell them there's no act of love more important than what they're doing to provide a secure parent for a child. And I admire the hell out of them for me, for it. It's great adoption. And this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Saloon and Casino has the best Vegas-style games in East Wenatchee. Come enjoy yourself and discover the nightly action. Win big and meet new friends at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. 
Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. JDSA Law is a proud sponsor of these local event broadcasts. JDSA Law has been serving North Central and Eastern Washington since 1946. For over 70 years, their team of dedicated professionals has delivered quality, innovative legal services. JDSA Law partners with you to provide the finest legal advice and support as you navigate your personal and business challenges, your risks, and your accomplishments. JDSA Law supports the TV broadcasts of these local community events. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think we should hire more people. Doc, I'm late for a meeting. I'm thinking of starting my own practice. Mm, do it. Too much capital. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We should knock that wall down and expand. Do it. There's always another wall beyond the wall. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank. Privately owned. Locally invested. Dear Mary Maids, please clean the kitchen and the cabinets and the floors and the chairs. And I wish you could clean the dog. <sighs> Colin is now feeding himself. Thanks, Megan. Hi, Megan. No worries. We got it all cleaned up. Let's hope Colin gets past the spaghetti flinging stage soon. Till then, we've got you covered. See you next time, Mary Maids. Welcome back to the program. It is uh, one of the largest fairs and one of the oldest fairs in North Central Washington, and they get to go first. It's not up in Waterville with the NCW Fair, and it's not out there in Kashmir. These guys get to bat lead off, pardon the baseball analogy. The Grant County Fair uh, starts on uh, Tuesday, and uh, well, Jim, introduce yourself to our television uh, Jim McKiernan, uh, director of the Grant County Fairgrounds, and have probably the best job in the world. It is a pretty good job. Oh yeah, it is a pretty good job. Yeah. This is this is crazy time for you guys. You're 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 closing in. It opens up on Tuesday. Yep. Runs right through Sunday. Yep. A merit of activities. How do you how do you keep it all organized? Mike? I wake up in the middle of the night and I send myself emails. That's usually the best way to describe what happens. Four o'clock in the morning, notoriously, I wake up, send myself an email because I forgot something. But we're going through lists. Uh, luckily, the staff. We've got a great staff, and so. Uh, they go through the lists and of things that we need to do. Right now, we're doing a lot of last-minute things just to get get ready and make sure the grounds look good and uh, um, anticipate the weather. That's a big thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it just takes takes uh, lots of going back and refreshing ourselves as to what we did prior years. This year's theme is sow it, grow it, and show it at the Grant County Fair. That's a pretty good marketing uh, idea. Who came up with that? We Couldn't actually have been you. No, no, I'm not that creative. Uh, we did a Facebook contest and. Uh, and that was the theme that everybody picked, our Fair Advisory Committee, uh, which is a group of volunteers that helps us put things together and plan, and they picked that out, and it was great. We did a contest on Facebook. It, 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 it's perfect because almost anything that is on display here at the Grand County Fair is a judged competition. Mm -hmm. Whether you do quilting or make pillows or have a pig or a, a horse or a dog, well, not a dog, but. Yeah, no, we but do yeah. dogs. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, do dogs. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, that's all part of the deal. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, we, uh, and photography exhibits, I mean, we're, we're probably the largest livestock um, show in the state uh, as far as t number of animals. We don't quite hit the, the mark on uh, the auction. Other, a couple other fairs do a little bit more than we do, but um, we did almost a million dollars in livestock auction sales last year, which all that money goes back to youth exhibitors and you know FFA kids. It prepares them for college and those kinds of things. Yeah, Future Farmers America, this is their big week, and uh, 4-H clubs, all kinds of uh, youth organizations. And the, the, I did a quick little look-see. Uh, Jim, as far as variety, goats, rabbits, chickens, horses, pigs, cows, sheep, um, little bitty pets. It's, it's yeah, like, we do pockets. Crazy. Pets. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, probably the two biggest categories are sheep and pigs. Uh, and uh, last year we actually added Grange into the mix, so we have three youth organizations now. So, uh, uh, but yeah, pigs. We will have close to 300 pigs and close to 300 sheep this year. That's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot. And of course, uh, the highlight, well, I shouldn't say the highlight, but the center of everything is going to be at the arena. That's, that's, they're going to have the roundup, you're going to have the demo derby, and lots of entertainment. Take things in chronological order on what's going to happen in the big arena. So uh, the, the Moslick Roundup Rodeo Association puts on the demo derby Tuesday and Wednesday of Fair Week, um, which it packs the stands. Uh, farmers come out of the woodwork to bash their old cars together and I think they do small cars one night and then they do the larger cars which are getting harder to find I mean yeah. uh, 
It's hard to find an old, uh, you know, 1970s four-door Impala. Uh, and then uh, when, uh, Friday, Saturday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they'll do the uh, PRCA rodeo, and uh, uh, it's always a good time. They have a beer garden and, and uh, do live music and stuff in the, in the rodeo uh, grounds at, at night, so it's a, it's a blast, too. And then musical entertainment. you got some good acts. You brought in uh, Mr. Ledoux. Yep, uh, some of the legendary in, Chris Ledoux, his son Ned, is going to be performing. Ned on Friday night. In fact, what's ironic is in 1992, Chris played the same stage that his father is, uh, that played that stage, and Ned's going to play that stage. Uh, and that wasn't far before Chris passed away, I believe. It wasn't I don't know the exact yeah. year of when he passed away. It was away. in the 90s, I know that. Yeah. But his son has picked up where his father left off. With his talented. band, I think. Yeah. 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 So we're really excited. I mean, in fact, we're going to start that one 9.30 at night so the rodeo crowd can come over and see that. Uh, and then Thursday night, we've got Michael Ray, uh, you know, a country star. We were really lucky to get him this year. Um, entertainment's been a hard thing to purchase, mainly because prices are so high, and they're booking um, tours further and further ahead. So if you're late in the game, you don't get an act. And so, but, but you got Michael Ray. No, oh, Michael Ray, yeah. he'll, be, he'll be great. I know all the ladies will love him. He's a good-looking guy, I guess. But uh, <laughs> my wife's all excited about it. I don't know. Uh, Lupito Infante, the the, uh, the Grammy nominated, I believe. Yes, yeah, They're she's talented. Traditional mariachi singer with her band, and she is an amazing um, Hispanic singer. We don't normally get that type of entertainment here, just because it's hard to find. Um, we were lucky enough to find her out of California and uh, and book her. So yeah, we're really excited about that one too. And for your uh, fans of uh, classic rock and roll, you got uh, three tribute bands, Ultimate Classic Rock. Talk yeah, about the, those three the one that's the, probably the most exciting, and I actually saw three of these bands about four weeks ago, is uh, the Tom Petty tribute band. Uh, and then we have an Eagles tribute band and a Fleetwood Mac tribute band, and all three are phenomenal. In fact, the Tom Petty tribute band, the guy looks like him, he sounds like him. It's like, whoa, he came back from the dead. So. And uh, Davis Shows Carnival, can't forget about that. They're back again. Pat and Geraldine, they just, you know, they're a class act when it comes to carnivals, and they put on a great show. They bring great rides. They're one of the safest organizations and businesses I've ever seen in that business, and uh, we're really lucky to have them. Uh, space burgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, all the food vendors are back, so you're going to be fed real well. Uh, yeah, I usually start my morning with Block 40 ice cream. They have the best soft serve ice cream in the area. And then I'll finish the day usually with Block 40 ice cream. It's much to the chagrin of my wife, who says I need to watch my A1C. But, but you still keep that, it's that, 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 that boyish figure of yeah, yours. That yeah, that boyish I, figure. I uh, hope I there's some slimming stuff on that <laughs> camera right there. Uh, a couple of pieces of advice before we get to the nitty gritty. This is a huge, it's 190 acres, and they take up pretty much the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So a good sturdy pen, uh, pair of shoes, hydrate. If it's hot, you want to hydrate. Now there's going to be a bottle of water everywhere, and you got some cooling stations, but we yeah. need to remind people, this is not a compact fairgrounds. It's big and it's spread out, and people need to keep keep that in mind before they come, shouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, we're probably one of the biggest fairgrounds in the state, and it's, I mean, it's a lot of walking. We, we do accommodate ADA access and have a cart that'll run people that need that around. Um, but if, if you're coming to the fair, just be prepared to walk a lot. And so uh, you notice I usually wear Romeos this time of year. Uh, I start wearing tennis shoes because my feet start to hurt if I don't. And uh, let's get people in the door here. Now, I think there, I was looking at the website. I think there was a, a mistake on admission to get in. What is it to the get admission in? Admission is, uh, so we did a little change this year. Tuesday's always free day. We right. don't charge anything on Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday were free till three. We actually took that from some other fairs in the state. That's what um, I, th I thought that was a mistake. Nope, thought, we're doing that just to try to encourage daytime usage of the fairgrounds and come to the fair during the day. Uh, um, and then it's $10 admission for adults, and I believe it's $5 for kids under 14. So That's a heck of a deal. Yeah, it's still a great deal. And, and I mean, we're going to have 25-plus food vendors, uh, several dozen just vendors of, of stuff. Uh, we really focused on that this year. So. In this debit card world that we live in, is that going to be enough, or do you need to bring some cash, or is most of the vendors going to be able to take your sweater? Most of the vendors will take cards nowadays. Okay. Uh, we've been encouraging our food vendors, especially some of the nonprofits, to move to some kind of POS system that takes uh, debit cards, because honestly, I don't even carry cash anymore. So. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe 10 bucks have... if my wife gives me yeah. 10 bucks. <laughs> We, we have learned one thing. Who who wears the pants in Jim's household? It's we, definitely my we, wife. We discovered uh, that. That's all right. I, I yeah, happy you. wife, happy life. Two more things will cut you loose. Uh, major sponsors. Uh, well, we got Local Tell this year, which is a huge sponsor. We really appreciate uh, that crew. Gisa. Uh, we have Jensen Farms. We have Grant County PUD. Um, Grant County Industrial Alliance, which is a 
a conglomeration of Microsoft and several other companies. We've got uh, Weinstein Beverages out of Wenatchee, Pepsi products. Um, and then we've got the City of Moses Lake Tourism and Grant County Tourism both contributed quite a bit this year to help us bring in some bigger entertainment. And none of this happens. I'm not talking just the Grant County Fair. I'm talking about year-round activities here at the fairgrounds. None of that happens without your, your crack staff from, from your landscapers and your groundskeepers, the guys who run around to the tractors to put out little fires to your office staff. They're, they're the backbones of this organization. We have, uh, we have an amazing crew right now. and. Uh, we have eight full-time people that take care of this. We do about 110 events a year, and so it's a very busy fairgrounds, probably one of the busy, busiest in the state. Um, we're, we're the largest equestrian facility in the state right now, and, uh, um, and then we bring in six to eight seasonals to get us through, but yeah, we've, we've just got a great staff. And it helps that location here in Moses Lake, right off I-90. It's just, it's an easy place to come and congregate and have a good time. It is, uh, and that's the big thing about the equestrian events. You know, when you're pulling a 40-foot horse trailer, they like to be able to get off I-90 and get here easily without damaging their $200,000 horse trip. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Not to mention their $200,000 horse. Uh, exactly, yeah. exactly. There you go. Jim, it's good to see you, my friend. Yeah, good to see you, Let's too. have a good fair. Yeah, you're going to come out, right? Absolutely. Talk I'll be there. The ice cream? I'll be there. Okay. Apparently, that's what I need to do. Yes, yes, Then I'll yes. just toddle on over to the beer garden. Yeah, exactly. You're watching Wake Up in Edgy Valley. We'll be right back. At Collins Fashions, personal service is our trademark. Our stylists love to assist our customers with great fashion choices like Tommy Bahama, Karen Kane, Tribal, Nick and Zoe, Habitat, Liverpool, Brighton handbags and jewelry, and many more. Whether you're going on a great vacation, hitting the beach at Lake Chelan, or the mother of the bride and groom, we want you to love what you wear. Collins Fashions in downtown Wenatchee, your personal shoppers. Enjoy the sounds of summer from your very own pool and spa. Blue Lagoon is now scheduling pool installations for this summer. Call today to schedule a free consultation for a custom San Juan fiberglass pool. And let the experts at Blue Lagoon handle the construction, installation, and regular maintenance. Turn your boring backyard into vacation paradise this summer with industry-leading San Juan pool. No need to go off the deep end. Relax knowing you're in great hands with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Open seven days a week for lunch and dinner in downtown Wenatchee and now downtown Leavenworth, where eating out is eating healthy. Transform your windows with a variety of colors and styles like the Allure Transitional Window Covering by Lafayette Interior Fashions. Hi, this is Darren with Mini Blinds and More. We can install the latest and greatest in technology to open and close your blinds with only a touch of a button. From the largest windows in your home to room darkening shades for the bedroom. From stylish shades for your entertainment room to custom blinds for those hard to fit places. We have a solution for all of your window covering needs. We offer a variety of window coverings from Lafayette Interior Fashions. Call us today. We are Mini Blinds and More, your local blind store. And we have returned live here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee on this Friday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Uh, when we have time, especially on Fridays as we head into the weekend, we always like to carve out a couple of extra minutes so we can go through our cameras, our PTZ cameras, courtesy of Local Tell's Sky Fi Division, and show you some more gorgeous views around this gorgeous uh, piece of real estate, the Wenatchee Valley in North Central Washington. We have that time today, so let's take another tour, shall we? That is, of course, jump off Ridge, a spectacular view there. You can see where they had the little fire up Badger Mountain Way on the far upper right hand corner of your screen. East Wenatchee, almost all of it is uh, within view. And uh, on the west side of the river, if you squint, you can almost, you can see where I live. You can actually see my house from uh, that view on Jump Off Ridge. And of course, directly below is the 
Stemilt uh, family of orchards. Beautiful view there from high atop Jump Off Ridge. And also we like to say good morning to Malaga because we love Malaga. I don't know what camera your eye chose, so we're just going to find out together. Okay, that's got to be Green's Knob. That is comfort. I just heard it in my earpiece. Uriah, who said, yeah, that's it. Yeah, at Green's Knob, that's uh, up Lake Chelan Way. That, uh, we have cameras farther up. We don't have cameras. We have towers. We have towers, Skyfi Towers, farther up the Lake Chelan area. But that's the, t the, the one tower that's farthest up that actually has a camera on it. And as you can see, it's a little breezy up there. And it's all dependent. We're going to have some wind today. A lot of it depends on the elevation that you call home. The lower the elevation, the less wind, the higher elevation, um, the more wind that you're going to get. And these, these towers are designed to do exactly that. There's nothing wrong with the tower. It's supposed to sway in the wind. So there you go, up to Green's Knob and Lake Chelan, which looks quite blue this morning. Let's check out this view. Ah, nicely done. Is that the Hay Canyon camera? Hay Canyon camera, high above beautiful Kashmir. That's a nice view there. Uh, let's see if I can see Tucker's house. Nope, can't quite make it out. Good morning to, uh, well, not Tucker's house. Tucker lives in Wenatchee. A beautiful view there, lovely, of uh, Kashmir from our Hay Canyon camera. And uh, camera four. I'm getting good at guessing these. Well, rock on it. We used this camera yesterday. Looks like Uriah has moved it just a little bit. Good morning to the Rock Island Golf Course, which, by the way, is a really good golf course. Well, rock Island, when I was growing up, wasn't considered one of the better treks around here. It was nine holes, uh, lots of goose droppings all over the place. But now it's 18 holes. They ripped out a couple of orchards. They made some huge improvements. Good job to the ownership group at uh, the Rock Island golf course and a very easy golf course to walk except the last three and a half holes when you have to walk uphill and you get pretty tired so good morning to our friends in Rock Island. I'm glad we did that yeah oh and a bonus camera way to go Uriah you threw one in on me there buddy the the uh, the Omni Garden camera again that is uh, zoomed way out there so we get a good swath of the Columbia River and Rocky Reach Dam. We drove by Rock Island Dam on Tuesday. I think they had like two and a half spill gates open. Looks like they only got maybe one, one and a half at Rocky Reach Dam. Good morning to Rocky Reach Dam, the Baker Flats area. Lake Annie had into there. Oh, and now another bonus. We're doing six cameras today. We're overdosing on cameras. The Cougar Ridge camera. Good morning to Sunny Slope. Good morning to Sleepy Hollow. Good morning to Omi Gardens. Good morning to Stamilt and uh, all the big fruit warehouses and the controlled atmosphere storage units on the north end of town and the Otabashian Bridge. Is that it, Uriah? Okay, six cameras. That's the new record. Wow, we'll do it again next year and we'll issue a coin. When we come back, you are the forecast. You're watching Wake Up at Edgy Valley on the NCW Live channel. invite you to watch Network TV. I interview different guests in technology, entrepreneurship, business, education, and nonprofit. It's a bit of a variety show, and you never know who you're going to meet or learn about on Network TV. Tune in weekly to the NCW Life channel. My name is Anna Marie. I've lived at Prestige here for six and a half years, and I love it. They just made you feel so welcome. I love my room. I get three meals a day, do as I darn well want to. I've loved it ever since I moved in. Mom's a wonderful, wonderful lady. She deserved the very best, and I got it for her here at Prestige. This summer, Abby's Legendary Pizza is helping stretch your hard-earned money. Our giant pizza is loaded with so many toppings that it usually feeds four to six people. Plus, join our e-club for special discounts for our favorite customers. At Abby's, we treat you like family.
Abby's knows what our customers like, and it's not pear and arugula. That's why we're offering a special price on this pizza loaded with two of your favorite meat toppings, Canadian bacon and beef. And if you want, we'll add some delicious fresh summer tomatoes too. Order now at abbeys.com. All right, it's going to be a little breezy today. Uh, the big story is this upcoming heat wave for most of next week. In fact, uh, I looked it up this morning when we were doing our show prep. On Tuesday the 15th, the record high temperature for August 15th is 101 degrees, and we said that just a couple of years ago in 2021. It looks very much like we are going to set a new record high on Tuesday, August 15th. Could even set a new record high on Monday because there is a sizable upper level ridge that's building over the Pacific Ocean. It's going to pretty much cover the entire Pacific Northwest by the time we get to Saturday, and that means temperatures are going to start taking off. Record high temperatures along the Oregon coast, uh, the very southern, uh, southwestern uh, section of our state. Vancouver will see some record highs. Portland will see some record highs as well, possibly Seattle. As far as we're concerned in our neck of the woods, Sunny and windy today could see a red flag warning if not today, maybe Saturday or Sunday because we are going to see some winds at times. And so if we have uh, hot temperatures, windy conditions and low relative humidity, they may issue a red flag warning and then it's just going to be hot on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. If your air conditioner needs a break, today's your day. You're going to need it starting on Sunday. And that's it for us. Have a great weekend. Join us Monday. Bye bye. Greetings, North Central Washington. Welcome to Network TV. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, Executive Director of NCW Tech Alliance, and I'm so delighted to have you join us today. At NCW Tech Alliance, we are passionate about fostering innovation, collaboration, and growth in our community. Our mission is to drive the advancement of technology and support the development of a thriving tech ecosystem in North Central Washington by supporting technology, entrepreneurship, and STEM education initiatives. Today, I'm welcoming back two of our previous guests, Dr. Sue Kane, Director of STEM Initiatives and